What a crazy day in the Air Things Masters. In uh, the last video, I showed you a game between Dubov and Carlsen. And that match ended in a two-all draw in day one. So I want to just give you an update and let you know what happened on day two. So this is the first game. Daniel Dubov with white. And Carlsen plays d5, and we have a Catalan, and bishop b4 check. In fact, the players played in exactly this way yesterday. Um, but this time, Dubov played more ambitiously. Here, yesterday, Dubov played b3, and that game ended in a draw. In this game, he played knight e5, so opening up this diagonal. Obviously, pawn takes pawn impossible because of this pin. And now Carson played a5. Okay, I think it's a good move, gaining some space on the, the queen side. Queen c2, and now Carson pushes again. It's an interesting move, just denying this knight use of the b3 square. You could play c5 straight away, but well, a4, a4 is really interesting. Rook d1. Uh, black strategy very often in this line is to try and, well, leave this knight very short of squares, actually. You can see this pawn on d5, you know, covers these squares, and now the pawn here covers this square. But Dubov has a nice plan for this knight. He exchanged on d5 and played knight c4, once again exploiting this pin. Very nice. In fact, it's a very common theme in this kind of pawn structure. Now, an interesting idea from Carlsen, h6. Instead of retreating that bishop, which I think would have, was well, certainly in this kind of position, I think that leaves white very nicely placed. Uh, with them also looking at d5, bit of pressure there, looking to get in here. I think it's better for white. But h6, that secures the knight on f6, so there's no chance of bishop g5, and so basically the knight is able to protect the pawn on d5, nice and secure. So the question is, why didn't Dubov take here? Well, this is Carlsen's idea. After this, the knight drops back, and then knight c6. And those knights can hit the outpost, queen d7 coming, rook c8 coming as well, and that's actually pretty pleasant for black. Um, this bishop isn't really doing much, it just hits this, but yeah, it's actually fine for black. It's a clever idea. Um, so Dubov played rook c1. That's fine, the c file is going to be very important. Knight a6. And now it is possible to take on d6. I guess Dubov probably just you know, excluded this from his thoughts, just thought this isn't possible. Here it's rather different, because after knight c4, that puts pressure here. Not possible to take, because bishop b7. Um, white is definitely better there. But, well, this is rapid play. Dubov just played a3. Just taking away the b4 square from the knight. And now... Carlsen dropped the bishop back, and this is different. Now he is back in the game. Knight e3. And c5. So this is quite important. He's managed to get in c5 before white had a chance to block with knight c6. And there's pressure here. And yeah, black is actually doing okay now. Uh, yeah, queen a4 isn't very good because of knight b4. Black has very good play. Knight f5. Well, the knights certainly look menacing, but with the bishop on f8 protecting these important pawns, then actually black is solid enough. Pawn takes pawn on d4. So this knight is going to come into the game, and then it has squares to go to. And certainly this justifies Carlsen's expansion with pawn to a4. Minor pieces need outposts, and that pawn on a4 certainly gives black an outpost there. 
And now if, well, let's say knight takes d4, then g5 is a problem. You can see that bishop protects the knight and, well, it's still incredibly complicated, but basically it's better for black. So Dubov in this position after pawn takes pawn played knight c6. So it's still very complicated. Queen d7. And got to watch out for the pin now. If knight takes, then again knight c5 is actually quite pleasant for black. It's actually very secure. The pawn on d5 is safe. And these knights uh, actually look quite nice for black. So Dubov played bishop h3. So with the bishop on this diagonal, then knight takes h6. Check is threatened, followed by bishop takes queen. And here Carlson makes, I think, a big mistake. I think he should just exchange here. And it is still incredibly messy. Um, white can take here, for example. White has two bishops. Um, you know, these pawns might disappear, but I mean, black certainly has enough play here. So it's a very odd position, actually. But king h8 is a mistake. He obviously overlooked knight e5. I understand king h8. Of course, he's making sure that there's no check here, because after knight h6, then the queen will simply be able to take on h3. But knight e5 is a problem. Where does the queen go? It has to keep hold of f7. Of course, it's attacked. If queen e6, then knight takes h6. This is a problem. The discovered attack again, and this time with the knight on e5, that is checkmate. The h7 square is covered. Nasty. So basically, after knight e5, rook takes knight was forced. And now Dubov is a clear exchange up. And you could see that Carlson was really suffering. And it looks as though kind of everything is under control. So Dubov has this nice bishop on d4. Knight on f5 looks good. This pin is slightly unusual, but still should be okay for white. Okay, the knight comes into the game. Queen e3 is a nice move. I like the way Dubov has shuffled his queen over towards the king side and now actually threatens queen takes pawn. Remember, there's a pin here. So king h7 protects that, steps out of the bishop's diagonal. And here, Dubov makes a practical decision. He takes on c5. Now, of course, normally, you know, this could be very good for black, but there's a tactical problem. Once again, this pin. That rook was really uh, worth playing to d1 many, many moves ago, but it's typical that in this position there are so many pins along the d-file and along the long diagonal. So after bishop takes knight, basically the knight has to recapture, and that's taken pressure off white's position. And now I think if Dubov just shuffles here, keeping the queen on this side of the board, protecting the knight, then the bishop will be free to, to either come back or maybe just come to g4 where it's protected. I think white has everything under control. I mean, why not? Beautiful rooks. All of white's pieces are well placed. You the exchange up. But here, queen f3 was played. And this gives Carlson a chance d4, opening the long diagonal. Tricky stuff. Rook takes pawn. The pawn is taken, and that attacks the queen. Um, and Carlson just put the queen back on e8. In fact, there's a crazy move here that would be impossible to analyse when you're short of time. Knight e6 is actually possible. I mean, look at all the, the pieces um, that can be captured here. White is probably still better, but anyway, it would have been crazy. Queen e8, played by Carlson, also very interesting. And if white plays precisely, then white should be winning. But 
like I said, in such a crazy position, short of time, so many pieces flying around, it's impossible. My computer tells me that queen g4 is a good move here. Instead, queen e3 played by Dubov. And just very quickly, coming back to queen g4, the point is that after queen c6, you can actually block this threat on h1 on the long diagonal with e4. That's the difference. And actually, white can play his way out of trouble. Queen e3 looks kind of natural. You want to exchange queens. Maybe it's the, the kind of move you make quickly. But after queen c6, yes, the diagonal can be blocked. But how often have we seen when the f pawn advances that diagonal down towards the king is weakened? And look at white's pieces lined up there. Still not, still seems as though black can't manage anything. In fact, after rook e8, an incredibly ugly move, but a very practical move, is rook e4. Now, knight can't take because the rook takes queen. After this, well, white's pawns are a mess, but who cares? The rooks have been exchanged, and the bishop can always come back to protect this. Should be okay for white. When I say okay, should be winning. But queen f2 played instantly by Dubov, understandable. But watch what happens. g6, queen f6, takes the queen out of this pin, hits the rook. It's getting very messy. Knight g4, not a beautiful place for the knight. And now the knight is pushed back to this ugly square on e3. Knight b3, up. Oh. Black is getting closer to the dream of getting the bishop on this diagonal. And here, well, Carlson, both players actually running down to their final few seconds. And Carlson had a choice between taking here and bishop c5. Queen takes b2 was played. Bishop c5 also decent, but queen takes b2 played. Just a very quick look at bishop c5. Um, here, I mean, it's a, really white is treading on a, on a high wire here, um, and it's so easy to lose. I mean, just getting out of this pin is really difficult. White is okay after this move, apparently. Uh, but again, how do you find a move like that when you're short of time? Um, and actually, crazy position could result where it's actually very hard for white to find moves in this position. Um, very odd material balance. But anyway, queen takes b2 played, rook d7, which hits the bishop, which hits the pawn. Bishop c5. Now it's getting absolutely mental. So if rook takes b7, bishop takes e3 wins. So rook takes pawn check. And here... Well, maybe Carlson had overlooked White's idea here. If the king goes back, this did not happen. Rook takes bishop. Does this win the queen? Well, it does win the queen. But unfortunately, it stumbles into a checkmate on the back rank. Let's just go to the end. That's not good. So Carlson had to play the king up the board, but it's not completely secure. Dubov doesn't bother defending here. Instead, he goes on the counter-attack. Wow. And let's just see what happens. Again, bishop takes leads to disaster. f4 check and mate on f7. You can choose which rook you like. Wow. Now, incredibly here, this, this is the threat... Incredibly, black is okay here. Queen h8 covers h7. Would you believe black is still all right in this position? Um, listen, if you want to analyze that, you are most welcome. I'll lead you through, <coughs> excuse me, what happened in the game. Queen a1 check. King g2. Bishop takes knight. Rook takes. Rook, rook check, king g5. Now, Carlson had obviously reached this position and thought, I'm still okay. 
he must have thought I've checked, brought the king to g2, and the pawn cannot advance because of the pin. But Dubov simply took the bishop. And now this is a threat. And once again, if bishop f2, we have this checkmate. Carlson must have just overlooked something in this. Well, that's that's obviously what he overlooked. So rook takes bishop, eliminating that dangerous bishop on the long diagonal is decisive. And the game finished like this. Rook f8, queen takes bishop. And, well, that's obviously over. Uh, let's play one more move here. And queen e7 mate. Ah, uh, incredible. Um, so that was game one. Game two was drawn. Carlson very nearly won a rook and pawn endgame. It's a bit like um, yesterday's rook and pawn endgame, actually, but this time Dubov held. Game three was, again, a completely crazy game with the advantage swinging back and forth. And Dubov won it. Afterwards, well... Uh, Dubov celebrated with a big victory salute. Um, well, fair enough. And, well, Magnus obviously not happy at all. But later he said, people may have good days or bad days against me and I against them. But not after another collapse, the bottom line is that I'm in a deep funk right now and it's really frustrating. Magnus suffering. And then in a follow-up tweet, tweet, he said, on a lighter note, Daniel just wrote to me to cheer me up after beating me and apologise for his celebration on air. Told him I didn't see it and it would upset me more when people stop celebrating after beating me. <laughs> Congrats to a most worthy opponent and a great dude. Great dude. Well, on, on our poll um, for Game of the Year, it looks like Dubov is way ahead but it looks like uh, he's dude of the year, not just game of the year. Yeah, Dubov, Dubov dude of the year after that victory. Uh, incredible stuff. So Dubov goes through to the semi-final. He's joined by, let me remember, yeah, big upsets today. MVL beats Wesley. And let me see, Aronian went through, Raja went through, beat Napo. And I've missed one more. Out. I've missed one more, haven't I? I can't think who. There we go. Anyway, you'll you'll see tomorrow. But yeah, big surprises. Nakamura went out, be, beaten by Aronian. Um, so absolutely fascinating. All bets are off, but well, I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching.